And the most helpful thing was your your comments on my uh, first assignment because your comments were really deep, very very detailed, and I started learning academic English, not watching your videos, but learning your your comments, going through your comments. Hello, everybody. And in this interview, I've got Alexei Berlinski with me. Alexei is uh, just about to finish his DBA, which is a doctorate in business and administration. And in this interview, we're going to talk a little bit more with Alexei about, you know, what's kind of what's worked for him the strategy that he's used to to help him finish his um, doctorate that I think might be really valuable um, for you as well. So thanks, Alexei, a lot for, for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Mike. Really glad um, to be here. So I, the first thing that maybe before we dive into it, sort of the, the main challenges and the strategies, the tips that you've used, can you tell us a little bit more about you know the the topic of your DBA and yeah and what specifically you're doing. I'm in ethical leadership. So I know leaders are those who influence the people to achieve common goals. And uh, one of the methods or one of the styles of this is influence is uh, ethical exemplar and ethical behavior, which uh, leaders demonstrate and. Research shows a lot of uh, evidence of the positive uh, positive outcomes of this style of leadership, but there is a lack of research on the antecedents of this uh, influence. How why people uh, perceive somebody as ethical person, as ethical leader, and that's the area where where am I? And the, the, there are multiple of antecedents, but one of the those which are in my interest is in uh, basic moral values. So our morality is uh, evolutionally determined and there are some basic moral, not, not foundations, maybe basic moral behaviors, something which uh, we uh, intuitively perceive as ethical. And my uh, hypothesis was that uh, the congruence with leader in these basic moral values determines uh, the evaluation of a leader as ethical person, as ethical leader. The research consists of two phases. One is quantitative and the second is a follow-up qualitative phase. That's that's really interesting because like, you know, for me that I, I have a small business, you know, with a few employees, or I'm obviously trying to be a leader as well. Um, so it's very interesting to to learn a little bit more about, you know, being an ethical leader. So, like, if you could give like one thing, you know, what what does being an ethical leader mean? Like something that leaders could implement in practice. Uh, it's you know the the theory says that the ethical leader is uh, that person which behaves ethically and manage manages the ethics in in followers. So you are ethical leaders according to, according to this theory. If you if you both ethical person and ethical manager, but some research shows that being the ethical manager is not that efficient. It's sometimes our management leads to the opposite opposite things. That means that the mostly influential thing is being genuinely uh, ethical. Yes, genuinely ethical, and if you are really sincere in this, uh, in your behavior as an ethical person. And if your group understands your behavior, your actions as ethical, you will inevitably be evaluated as ethical and uh, this mm -hmm. will entail uh, positive outcomes. But the thing is that uh, this works not really cross-cultural. So if you are from one culture and the group is from another culture, these things maybe not congruent and my research was how to identify what, what is congruent with this particular group so that uh, a leader could adjust their behavior to fit this uh, this set of shared moral values and that's that means that there is no one one answer on your question so you need to to understand your followers better and there is there are some instruments how to how to do this how to diagnose how to provide the di diagnostic and then adjust your behavior sounds that you shouldn't do the wrong things and you you must do the right things and it doesn't mean that you're hypocrite you're just trying to highlight uh, the better things in your in your behavior so to just mm -hmm. behave more acceptable for your followers and one of that's the, interesting uh, so it sounds like it's very contextual dependent on your followers the country you're in and, and those kind of things 
Yes, morality is contextual dependent. It's it's right. There is one more thing which uh, I found is uh, that when we speak about leader and followers, this is not the same if we speak about the peers, only the followers. The followers, when the way the, when they are fear, uh, peers, they value a slightly different things uh, than they appreciate in a leader. So when we we see the leader, we understand that they are the leaders are entitled for some different different actions so sorry for my speaking english so my written english is better writing it's, english right. yeah um, no that's that's i i find it i find it very very interesting you know and that it's it's also contextual and dependent on you know on your followers i i wanted to ask you now because you know i want to dive into some like strategies and, and tips for other doctoral students so like we met i remember we met a couple of, of years ago and started working together when you were like kind of earlier in your dba journey so what, what were some of the like let's say the biggest challenges or hurdles that you faced when it comes to like doing a doctorate writing your thesis you know the, the first challenge was to do it systematically so i had to learn how to do it every day for several hours and if i couldn't do this so i, I wouldn't uh, finalize my thesis the second was uh, the low level of, uh, of my uh, reading and writing skills and uh, it's it was really uh, not comfortable maybe it, it was really hard to read even one article that time it was uh, you know, first time when I wrote a hundred words, that was really achievement. So it was, it took an effort. Now, uh, one day I can write thousand, maybe two thousand. It's not really as, as hard as it was that time when she, when I wrote the first hundred, uh, hundred words. And that's, uh, that, that, that was the main obstacles maybe. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know my field, uh, so that was uh, one of obstacles as well. So I need to read a lot in order to just mm -hmm. uh, rent myself because that was really uh, unclear how to start writing the literature review, etc. Because I didn't know how to what, what to focus on. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I think this issue of like being systematic with it is something that you know a lot of us face when it comes to writing papers or writing you know, a thesis. And especially at the beginning, it just feels like oh, I still have a lot of time. I don't need to do it every day because I still have two years, three years left, right? So how how did you how did you tackle this issue? Or like what strategies could you share with people like who struggle to write systematically every day? Uh, it's, it's, uh, there is no universal uh, advice, but I can say how, how did I do this? So I just uh, uh, learned how to wake up at six, start at 6.30 and spend three to four hours a day writing as first second i had to stop myself uh, writing after these four hours because if i spent a day uh, reading and writing next day or maybe next several days i won't be able to write anymore so this is really important to have a re repeated uh, a limited chunks of time you spend uh, on reading and writing that's the main main thing so this uh, this is kind of discipline self-discipline just to force yourself to drink a couple of uh, uh, mugs of coffee, force yourself to write several hours and force yourself to stop at certain time, 11 or 12, and that's it. No no more practice this day. Even if you want, if, even if there is a lot of ideas you, you want to, to write, you should to stop, you should stop. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video. Okay. Cool. How did you, I mean, it, it sounds really easy now that you say it, or oh, I just started getting up early and then I would write for three hours, you know, and then I would stop. But like, I think for somebody who's, you know, who's at the moment not writing almost at all, like how, how did you learn to, for example, get up at early and start early? How did you develop this self-discipline? Because it's quite, it's quite impressive, you know, that, that you've managed to do it. It's, it's step by step. It, it was not really easy in the, in the beginning. And when you do it every day, 
try to do it and uh, when you find a little pleasure in this uh, activity every day you add a bit to this competence and sometimes within maybe a half a year or maybe within a year it becomes a habit but uh, you have to force yourself first several months just to wake up and to write at least 100 words so if i write at least 100 words some machine inside my head stops uh, working and the the rest is easier but the the very beginning is very difficult every day mm -hmm. that's why i drink one or two big cups of coffee and starts ah one more tip so you can start reviewing what you did the last time it's uh, creates some traction so when you pick one thing another thing and then kind of uh, flow begins and the rest is easier it gets easier mm. so you you would start a little bit by reading what you wrote the day before just to yeah. get your mind into the flow of the reading writing. reading correcting mistakes maybe um amending the flow and when you catch the flow again it goes mm -hmm. okay well, that's that that makes a lot of sense and you said something that i thought was was interesting and i wanted to ask you about it because you said that you would write or read for like maybe three hours and then you would stop and you said that stopping was really important why 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 did you stop why didn't you just continue for the whole day it's uh, because it uh, it entails uh, uh, the burnout if you don't stop you need you need to relax and you need to relax the most past, uh, part of a day change the uh, type of your activities first and you need some time to spend with your family with uh, with your colleagues you need to work I mean, because otherwise you won't I, I don't know I'm, I'm not a PhD student so I'm part-time and I, I have to work for a parallel that's why anyways I would stop but this is really helpful to stop and to do something different so that you uh, can return to your writing next day with a refreshed mind. Otherwise, you'll burn out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree that, that that kind of rest and relaxation and a break from what you're doing is definitely really, really important, you know, because it, it keeps your mind fresh, I suppose. But I'm curious as well, now that you mentioned that, you know, you also work, how how did you manage that? Because sometimes, you know, I, I, I get also get PhD students, clients on, on the same program that you're on, who kind of who work, and then they, they're doing the PhD part-time. How, how did you manage both activities and still finish your thesis? It's, um, I'm lucky that I can work uh, with a flexible schedule and start working from one PM. That means that I can stop uh, writing at 11 or 12 p.m., have a little break for lunch, and then start working for four or five hours. In, and it's enough for my type of work. Okay. That I spent four, maybe five hours on writing and five hours for working. And it's okay. For me, it's okay. 10 hours a day is it's fine. Yeah. And it's, it sounds like you you divided your days very strictly, that like morning is writing yeah. and then at 12. Is that yes. part of what, what helped you to develop that habit of absolutely. writing? Absolutely. It gives me a writing. Right, right. It it's, mm -hmm. uh, gives, me, gives me the cycle, everyday mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah. When I work, I refresh from writing. When I write, I refresh from working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I found as well that like when you have a lot of things going on, I like to schedule them um, mm -hmm. regularly on the same days of the week because then I don't have to think what I'm supposed to do Absolutely. on Monday in the morning. I know because it's already planned and it's the same every Monday morning. Yeah, same. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah that, that helps a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that you mentioned you struggled at the beginning, I think it's a, you know, it's a problem that with like a lot of PhD students face as well is, you know, is the writing skill. So what, what specifically did you struggle when it comes to like academic writing, writing a PhD thesis? What were some challenges? It didn't have uh, a sufficient uh, active vocabulary. So, and I, I, I'm not a native English speaker. I try to write as I understand it would be natural and I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't learn how to do it unless I joined your program. And the most helpful thing was your, your comments on my first assignment because your comments were really deep, very, very detailed. And I started learning academic English, not watching your videos, but learning your your comments, going through your comments. For me, video is video does work. It's it's not my format. So I am reading and writing person. And when I did something wrong, 
and you comment it. It's much more valuable than I, when I uh, read something prior to and try to do something right. So the efficiency of the pro of the learning process is much better when I tried something, received the feedback, and then corrected my mistakes. That helped me a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was it was quite impressive. I I told you in in a private message when last time we we spoke that. You know, the difference between the first literature review that you sent me and then now this thesis draft that you sent me, it's like it's like two different Alexis, literally, you know? So like, w w what did you do to, you know, to go from like here to here with your literature review and your thesis, you know? It's how not, did you, how did you approach it? I, uh, not really a certain way. And yeah, just, uh, I just analyzed uh, the comments of reviewers and um, I read the articles and I tried to use uh, those uh, uh, phrases, those words, which the, the articles use. I, I, I was trying to just to make my text similar to academic articles. That's it. Uh, mm -hmm. No special special method. Yeah, just you make it sound time. very very simple, Alexei. You make it's, it it's sound very, very it's, simple. It's not it's not easy to do it every day. That's the most challenging part. But the rest is mm -hmm. simple. Of course, if you train mm -hmm. yourself, it's like learning different languages or you know you know the, to training your dog to do some, something. It's it's mm -hmm. we are we're animals in the inside, so we need to train ourselves to do something by mm -hmm. certain little things every day and. So that's the key to success. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think from what, what I can what I can hear, like one of the keys to, to success is is also being able to to just take the feedback that somebody gives you and apply it. Because I find that sometimes you know, because feedback can be harsh. Sometimes it can be brutal. You know, like yeah, your whole literature review is is bad. Like this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And sometimes yeah, we 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 get stopped by that because we feel oh my god, like this is really bad. But like I think you had the ability of just like taking that feedback it's like okay i made this mistake i'm gonna correct it this is the second mistake i'm gonna correct it yeah my reaction first reaction is very emotional so you need to step back uh, sit sit a little bit i don't know several hours or maybe come back to this feedback uh, next day because first reaction is, is uh, emotional. You put so much effort to do something and you receive the critical feedback and it is always freaking critical. And it is mm -hmm. always perceived as harsh. So anything, because not, not critical and not harsh uh, feedback is not uh, really <laughs> useful, you know. So if, uh, if the person who reviews your paper just uh, gives you compliments, so it's, it doesn't work. So you need to receive this harsh feedback. You need to get, uh, let those emotions to, uh, how to say to go and then come back to it and analyze step by step and try to implement the mm -hmm. corrections yeah absolutely no that's that's a perfect perfect approach so you've you finished kind of writing the first draft of the thesis alexei congratulations on that you know you're you're very close to finishing this this dba so so what's what's next for you what's what's the what's the plan so you know uh, you mean after defense or to to get to the defense yeah i yeah when, when, is your, when are you planning to, to defend it? defend defend is on uh, september so you, there is a lot of work uh, ahead so i think i after after review i will need to make a lot of corrections first then i have a preliminary dissertation improvement day which uh, which will which i again will receive some not so pleasant uh, pleasant uh, feedback and i will need to uh, to amend the thesis then uh, i should send it to two independent reviewers supported by school and uh, receive their positive two positive feedbacks and only if i receive these two positive feedbacks i will be allowed to defend it uh, orally in september so a lot of work mm -hmm. ahead. yeah yeah but i think i think you're there you've made so, so much progress alexei that i'm pretty sure that those reviewers will be very very happy with your thesis. Thank you, Mari. Thank you very much. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video. Video.